Hello again, I'm Molly Caron with Full Figure Media, and I'm happy to welcome back my colleague MTS Poppet with the Coalition Against Bigotry Pacific. Mm -hmm. He's spoken out against anti-Islamic sentiments, and he's here again to speak with us as we approach the anniversary of the massacre in the mosque in Quebec. Thank you for joining us today. Right. Molly, it's been about three years almost. So January 29th is the third anniversary of the um, Quebec mosque massacre where uh, uh, Alexander Bissonnette went into the mosque and killed uh, people praying and he has not been charged with any act of hate or terrorism, um, which is <laughs> really telling how racist this whole system is. Uh, so there's been a campaign uh, since then uh, to mark January 29th as a day of remembrance and action against Islamophobia um, by the federal government, and they have not done so. However, a number of cities in Ontario have uh, designated and proclaimed that day as a day of remembrance and action against Islamophobia. And there's a motion going forward uh, by Jean Swanson to Vancouver City Council uh, next week um, uh, to make this motion and we hopefully it will pass so we can mark this day here in Vancouver as well, officially by the city. So how was, how is anti-Islamic phobia, how is it felt here in our city of Vancouver? How does it materialize? So I mean, I think, you know, when that happened three years ago, people gravitated to the Al Jamia Mosque on uh, 8th Avenue, which is probably the most visible mosque in the downtown Vancouver area. It's the oldest mosque yeah. in British Columbia. And we had a number of vigils, and we've been having vigils there uh, annually since that, because that's where people gathered, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, to show, show their grief and shock that this had happened in Canada. Um, and so that has been the effect. But in terms of Islamophobia, here in Canada, or across the country, in urban rural areas, it's been growing uh, and it's been felt, particularly people who are visibly Muslim, particularly women wearing hijab with their children who face outright um, hate um, and name calling um, and, and this has not ended. So I was recently in Montreal, in La Belle Provence, and I noticed a lot of people of all backgrounds wearing buttons that had Bill C-21 with a line through it. Mm -hmm. I did not see that when I went to rural Quebec up north. And I, I feel that it's an interesting, uh, an interesting fact. When you're in an urban center, there's a lot more woke folk, but when you go to the rural areas, that's where I really see racism. What's your experience? Well, I think that's the, that's the case across Canada, and that's because I think when immigrants migrated to Canada, that they're centered in urban centers first, and people know who we are, they're yeah. used to us, and you know, xenophobia and racism, uh, by bigotry, um, has been challenged, has been addressed, and there's been a lot of progress been made in that area. But that's not the case in rural Canada, which is why the white supremacists thrive there which is why when the white supremacists uh, revived, uh, particularly the KKK three years ago, leafleting in the Fraser Valley, that's when the Coalition of Bigotry Pacific came around. We decided to call ourselves uh, Coalition of Bigotry Pacific and not British Columbia because British Columbia is a colonial construct and we wanted to not to do that. So we want to address the fact that this is, you know, unceded territory, that this Canada is built on racism, built on bigotry, and uh, this is just, uh, a phase of it. So what the reality in, in the rural Canada is Canada's reality. This is Canada's history. Canada was built on racism, on bigotry, and um, that's what Canada is. Well, we were reminded of that with several examples of our Prime Minister's uh, Halloween blackface costumes. We've, oh. We're reminded of this regularly with, um, recently with the Bank of Montreal, when there was a wrongful arrest of indigenous yes, people. Absolutely. So Canada is shamed regularly in the media and we are always grappling with this. Do you, th do you see growth? No, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting. There's a lot of denial, including from the prime minister, right? Uh, and you know, he apologized for his, his black brown face and said, we must do better. Well, they haven't not done better. There has been a campaign 
to proclaim January 29th as a day against Islamophobia, the federal government has not acted on that. They passed a motion in Parliament against Islamophobia, and that's about it. So we expect a lot more from the government. But here's something, Molly, is that when uh, Trudeau opened the doors for Syrian refugees to Canada, and when they were, there was a racial attack on these refugees, he made this speech saying that this is not who we are, this is not what we're about. Well, that's not true, Mr. Trudeau. This is who we are. Yeah. This is what we're about. We're a racist country, right? But we're and, and so there's a hard denial coming from the prime minister yeah. and so on. And I was so, I mean, I ran in the last federal election because I was disappointed with Jagmeet Singh, you know, leader of the federal NDP, who said that how do we deal with bigotry and racism? Love and courage. Well, <laughs> we're used to love and courage, right? That means that government's not going to do anything. We need government responsibility. We need government action. You know, and that's what we're calling for from the, from the city government, the provincial government, and the federal government. This issue is not going away, right. whether it's, you know, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, transphobia. It's just, it's just here, and, and we need to deal with it, and, and no government is dealing with that. So bring it back to Metro Vancouver. We have the VPD, who's also, I think, wrestling with this, learning as they go. <laughs> and I know that they're diversifying their, their force. Do you, do you feel a difference since you've lived in Vancouver in, your, um, ex in, in what you've witnessed with the VPD? Yeah, well, you know, I've been here on Access TV uh, before um, talking about what the VPD didn't do and how they say have failed us when we had our rally against uh, uh, on, on the International Day Against Racism, uh, and the soldiers of one attacked us, right? Visibly, one was just coming directly towards me. So the police didn't do anything. And then the finally police uh, arrested them momentarily, handcuffed them, put them on the sides, and then they released them as the rally was ending so they can come and then harass the people going home, right? This is what the Vancouver police does or doesn't do. Well, I, really I haven't seen any change, Molly, in our police force. And I think that the police force is responsible, so is the city government, mm -hmm. because they're responsible. Thank you, MTS Popat, with the Coalition Against Bigotry Pacific. And thank you for joining us on Full Figure Media. I'm Molly Caron with MTS Popat. Mm -hmm.